Hey Vikes, I'm Savannah. And I'm Madison, and you're watching SCTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform, finding character, and giving others a voice. This is SVTV. Let's get right into the announcements. Finals start Monday the 11th for odd classes and continue until Tuesday the 12th for even classes. The block schedule is posted on Schoology. SHS is exploring the prestigious Seal of Biliteracy Award. If you are bilingual and interested in learning about this award, contact Ms. Martinez. With the wrestling season starting, Austin and Justin went to go get a preview of what's ahead of this season. We caught up with Seaman High School's head wrestling coach to see what his expectations are for next year. So, uh, so really, I, I think we're coming off a, a good year, and, uh, and we're probably this year looking at, at maybe a little bit more stronger individual performances and maybe a little bit less um, you know, high placings as, as team overall. Well, really, this is such a unique year um, for two reasons. Uh, obviously, the COVID um, reason. And what I've uh, said is that, you know, we're focusing on the end of February and how we get there might be, you know, look much different than in past years, but that's, that's still the goal is the end, end of February. We asked him about some key players with high expectations this year. Really, uh, Justin Cruz is a returning state, uh, a state participant. He was 28-21 last year. Uh, Chandler Busing, the state qualifier, um, he has a career record of 41, 47, and uh, 7 and 8 last year. Uh, Kyle Adams, a two-time state qualifier coming into the season, and he really would be a three-time state qualifier, but uh, last season at regionals, he was injured and, and really most likely would have qualified. Um, really good 30-win season last year, so he's 30 and 11 last year. Looking for uh, for a couple of those guys uh, to get on the podium, and, um, and you know I know they're hungry for it. We asked him how COVID has changed his season so far and how it will continue to change his season. Oh, man, it's affected it just greatly. I mean, all facets uh, from practice planning to competition planning to how we um, deal with uh, gear and um, just the cleanliness aspect. You know, going to try to uh, get into the live streaming a bit and, and see, see where that goes. Um, but just the configuration of, of the mat space um, and the, the idea without fans are two really big, uh, uh, big differences. It's just been a, a huge cloud over everything if you want to look at it that way. But, but really, we're, we're working through it and uh, making the most of it. Seaman Wrestling's first meet after winter break is January 9th. Make sure you tune in and watch. Good luck, wrestlers. Let's head over to Zoe to learn more about the weather this upcoming week. Good afternoon Vikings. We are going to be sticking in the 50s area for the next upcoming days and then drop back down into the 40s later this week. Today is National Trivia Day and National Spaghetti Day so make sure to eat some spaghetti while playing a trivia game. For today we are going to be warming a bit more up than what we have been the past couple of days with our highs reaching up into the 40s and then dropping back down into the 30s by tonight. For your SVTV 7 day forecast, our temperatures are going to get warm these next couple of days before we drop back down to our average temperatures around this time. And we also do have a slight chance of rain and possibly snow on Wednesday and Thursday. Now back to your anchors. Thank you, Zoe. Students are not the only ones affected by remote learning. Today we are leaving you the story about teachers reflect on remote learning. This year has been full of a lot of changes. We recently have done stories on how students did during fully remote last semester. We are going to take a look on how it went for teachers. I think it was very difficult to keep students engaged. You know, it can be difficult when they're in the classroom to keep them engaged. So being home with a ton of other distractions naturally, uh, it's harder. It's harder for me to stay engaged if I'm working from home. I learned from I had online classes at college, and it was harder for me to stay engaged. So it was abs it's absolutely harder. But at the same time, there are a lot of kids that I taught th uh, this semester that made a really good effort to stay engaged, and I appreciate those kids. 
I liked to do a lot of small group work originally. When we transitioned into the hybrid at the beginning of the year, that kind of went away. So I had time to sort of adjust and I try to be very active with the kids that were in the classroom during hybrid. And even when they were remote, I try to see what they were doing using the Google Docs and try to stay engaged with them there. And that way we kind of get that hands-on experience. I just want to say a big thank you to all the students who uh, did a really good job this semester and even those who struggled and those who put a effort forth to uh, do their best. I really appreciate that as a teacher and I know your other teachers appreciate that as well. For me, kind of like I was just saying, um, I thrive on being in the studio with my students. So I missed the interaction with students and their projects and suggestions of technique. That's all we have for you guys. Have a wonderful Monday.